here we are, week two of Advent, and our Christmas tree is up and decorated, and I thought I would share with you a few of the ornaments that we have on our tree. Um, our tree is a, a hodgepodge of different things. First of all, our last name is Lamb, and so you'll notice there are lots of lamb ornaments that people have given us over the years. Turn this little lamb around. There are, are ornaments from uh, both of our grandmothers. My grandmother made a themed Christmas tree every year for us when we were small. And the, this is an ornament uh, that she stitched together, beaded, probably from a kit. Um, and throughout my tree there are ornaments that came from different years um, of the themed Christmas tree she had. For example, these were probably from my mother's Christmas. I have several of these on my tree that she gave, my grandmother gave me um, that she used throughout the years, but probably something she did when my mother was young. Uh, these green baubles came from my husband's grandmother. Here's another train ornament that my, gr my grandmother made. Um, again with the sequins and the felt. She made a lot of train ornaments because my father was into trains and so that way he had ornaments on the tree that he could enjoy. I have ornaments on here from students. I had a student who went to India and brought me back interesting uh, ornaments from there to put on my tree. I have ornaments that students made for me um, I just saw one. This one was one that a student's mother painted for me. It's a popular thing to give teachers uh, the ornaments and I've loved every one of them. Here's one. This was a popular thing to do for a while. These are beads that just kind of sandwich together um, on pipe cleaners and I have several of these from different students in the first few years I was teaching, handmade. We have a collection of glass ornaments um, that we've had, were gifted from one of Chris's grandmothers when we first got married, and they have survived pretty well over the years. There's another little lamb in a basket. Then our sons um, get a Christmas ornament every year from their grandmother based on their interests. And so we have, um, we have a lot of birds. One of my sons was really into birds. Actually, we all are, but another son, there's a bird there. Another son was really into polar bears. And there's, on this branch, we got the bird. We've got the backside of the polar bear. Oops. For my son Cooper, and then there's another lamb just for the family. There's a baseball. I don't know if that's my son Cooper or my son Eli. They're both into baseball. Um, there we have a lamb skiing. And um, another, another bird. And another lamb. ornament for my son in college. So lots of ornaments. The crab and the zebra, those are boys' ornaments. They get stored in their own boxes every year. And this year I went ahead and put up Zach and Eli's ornaments because they're not here. But at some point I have to give Zach his ornaments. He's got his own new house. There's another polar bear for Cooper. Um, so yeah, these are some of the things that have made it onto our tree. This is a colleague of mine made for me. I'm a math teacher. So there's pie. <laughs> made on a 3D printer. And then there are lots of little socks that I've stocked, little tiny stockings I've knitted. This one actually I knitted as part of my grandmother's um, advent calendar that I made for her. Don't think it was last year. I think it was the year before last. And when my grandmother passed away, I cleaned out a few of the things from her room 
This is one of the ones I chose to bring back and keep with me. So that's on there for her. It's a tiny little sock ornament. And then I, one year I made a bunch of gifts and I have a couple that I've saved in different stripey styles. Um, one year this was the theme on my grandmother's Christmas tree. I think my grandfather cut these out or she bought them at, um, you know, like a Michael's. And then she was fond of these little these little wooden dolls that you got a lot of places. And so she probably painted them and glued them together. She was very creative and crafty. So that's our Christmas tree. It's always just a little bit of a mishmash of everything. This year we went with what's called an unsheared tree, so it's sort of random. The shape um, isn't, it isn't shaped as it grows. It's very tall, it goes right into our ceiling, we don't have a star on top. But my husband and I both like funny kind of trees, they feel like, they feel more homegrown and, and they fit us better. So, might be a little Charlie Brownish, but we love it. We've had big fat trees some years, little scrawny trees. And so that's our Christmas tree for this year. So one thing I wanted to talk about on our Christmas tree are these candles in these silver candle holders. We have several on the tree. We um, do not light them, but my husband's family, um, many of them are part of the Moravian Church. Um, they have a um, fairly strong following in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which isn't far from us. and. Um, several members of the family going way back were actually tinsmiths. So although they did not make these candle holders, it's been a tradition on my husband's childhood trees to have real candles. Um, and even when he was young, Christmas is at his house, they would light the candles and all the boys in the family would stand there with um, squirt bottles to put out any impending fire because it's very dangerous of course to have lit candles on a tree. I can't imagine um, letting them be lit for long. But they look cheerful and make me happy to put them on the tree every year. Some of the tin work that is was done by family members we have displayed on our wall this is a 10 light reflector hanging on our wall with a candle. And we have some over here as well, made by a member of the family. These both have Moravian Love Feast candles in them. These are used at Moravian Love Feast, which happens in the Christmas season, the Advent season. At some point when my grandmother was downsizing, she offered me her nativity scene. We actually got a nativity that I made for my kids that I'll show you. Um, but this one is old and I think is of a vintage that my mother even, it was around when my mother was a child. Um, not all of the pieces are from the same set. You'll notice that here are some, this for example, that sheep is a different vintage than, than this sheep. Um, I think there were two sets put together. We've got some shepherds, sheep, a cow, and a donkey. All of them sort of randomly sized, as you can tell that, or maybe that's a dog. I guess that's a sheep dog. That's not a cow, that's a sheep dog. But still, the sheep dog is almost the same size as the donkey, which is kind of funny. Um, we have Mary and Joseph, and of course the angel, and the baby front and center, and then we've got the three wise men. Now my mom was very picky. She wouldn't wouldn't allow us to have the three wise men yet because they didn't appear till after the birth and the baby certainly wouldn't be in the manger at this point in the proceedings because the baby appeared on Christmas Day. This baby of course 
is attached to the um, little manger there, and it doesn't make sense, in my opinion, to have Mary looking like that at the ground. <laughs> so, in our house, the baby is there the whole time. Anyway, <clears throat> some years this is on, it, this changes places depending on my mood. This year it's in this little nook um, in a hallway leading into our living room helping us get ready for the season. So every year on the entry hall I put our gnome collection and I put it with a basket that we will put all of our Christmas cards in. But I've got a whole series of gnomes that came from different places. So these three little knitted gnomes were made by my... Uh, actually there's a fourth one back there were made uh, by the woman who was my son's home nursery teacher when they were the very first days of, of school. So when they were three, four, and five, they went to a mother, you know, a morning day, day school kind of program, just till lunchtime. And Miss Gwen took brilliant care of them, and we were so very sad. Miss Gwen just passed away this past month, and so. It was especially bittersweet to pull out the gnomes these this year, but she would knit little things for the children's birthdays, for Easter, and for Christmas. And all three little gnomes are just so darling, or all four little gnomes are just so darling. Now this was also from the Waldorf School, um, probably from one of the Christmas fairs. So we have this little gnome with this old jingle bell on top. And I think one of the gnomes had a backpack on maybe not now but she often would knit a little backpack on so that they could be carrying a little jewel in their pocket. Um, then we have this Yule Tompton gifted to us from some Swedish friends in front of one of our Swedish snowball candle holders. And then these are Korknisse which are also uh, little gnomes with cork bodies. Uh, that's a pattern on Ravelry that's free that I knit quite a while ago. I have them in colorful winter blues and then over here on reds and what happens is I, knit a, I get into a phase where I knit a bunch and I store cork so I have plenty and then when we need a last minute gift especially when the kids are small, not so much now, but a last minute gift or something you could tie one of these little gnome guys on it and so these are the, the few that have survived over the years and left for our collection and then there's this one made out of a branch that my boys one Christmas they made a bunch to give to their friends so it's just a a branch that they sawed and painted and that's the only one left of those um, and it's on a table runner that I made that at the time had enough um, people on it to represent every member of our family but our family continues to grow we've added people so these are just random random gingerbread men um, on this to represent family and getting together at Christmas I have a very beginning collection of these snowball things, knitted Christmas balls. Arnie and Carlos um, published a book about Christmas balls and I've made four of them. It may look like more because it's reflected in the mirror. And I hope to make more. They're fun to make. They don't take long. Um, and again, I get in the mood and I make several and there, some of them have been gifted. But I'm aiming for a collection here. And I always take the leftovers of the Christmas tree and hang them over the mirror and then hang stuff from them. These are, again, something that my grandmother did one year. She was in a very red and blue theme for Christmas one year. So I have a couple of these hanging up in little hoops that she made. and it just makes our entryway look festive. I have that above, and then I have 
the gnomes below. You come into the house and see the tree, and it feels very festive. Mm -hmm.